By mid-June 1848, three-fourths of the men in San Francisco left the town to find gold, leaving stores empty, schools closed, and ships docked because their workers had deserted them. By late summer 1848, newspapers back east began to reprint stories from California papers about the discovery of gold. They printed letters from miners telling of their successes. Many Easterners doubted these claims until President Polk confirmed the stories in December of that year. Soon, fortune seekers arrived in California from all over the United States and the world, including Europe. Ships traveling from California to Hawaii, Mexico, South America, and China all brought back gold hunters as well as supplies to sell. Most of these men expected to return home as soon as they struck it rich. For many years, there were very few women who made the trip to California. This began to change, and they tried to bring more women settlers out to California. Um, California, for example, was the first uh, American state to pass a law that would allow married women to retain the property they owned before they were married. Uh, and this was a big deal because that brought women out to California realizing that once they got married, they would still retain their property rights. Gold seekers had a choice of traveling to California by land or sea. Both were treacherous. Travelers might choose to sail to Panama and take a separate ship north to California. They risked disease and other hardships on the long journey. Many chose to travel overland on the California Trail. Those who timed their trips poorly risked freezing to death in the Sierra Nevada mountains if they got to them after September. Despite the dangers facing anyone attempting to make the journey, the mass migration to California continued throughout 1849. Those who embarked on the mass migration were called 49ers. They were said to have caught gold fever because they succumbed to the desire for instant wealth that made farming and most other occupations seem unappealing by comparison. What the settlers thought, uh, the people who moved out west, the emigrants out west, uh, believed from the stories was that you, know, you, you went there a poor man and overnight you were fabulously wealthy. There were large amounts of gold and you could settle there and uh, you know, become rich beyond all your expectations overnight. What well, they discovered, for the most part, was it was uh, very tiny amounts of gold, but they called gold dust. One gold seeker called this gold fever the beginning of our national madness, our insanity of greed. The miners were not the only ones who were motivated by greed. So too were the merchants. As some 80,000 people swarmed into California in 1849 looking for gold, prices for everything soared. It has been said that a pair of boots which cost $2.50 in the East sold for $20 in California. Gambling halls, saloons, and other entertainment sites appeared virtually overnight, and many men spent all of their gold dust there. Many, many people went away broke. The people that did make money, though, were the business people. The people that could sell watermelons or tomatoes or, or potatoes or, or squash, lettuce, people who were raising beef. Those were in great demand because these miners that were showing up in 49 and 50 literally had nothing but was on their back. Wherever gold was found, boomtown settlements sprang up. The men set up tents and wooden shanties as their only protection against the weather. Many of these instant towns disappeared as soon as the gold was mined out. The gold miners spent long, hard hours digging and sifting as ice-cold torrents of water came down from the mountains and the sun beat down. Their boots and clothes rotted away, their hands blistered. Heavy rains would wash away the dams they built, forcing them to start all over again. Many of the gold seekers who left their homes in 1849 did not make it to the digging sites until 1850, by which time much of the surface gold had been removed. It took teams of men to wring any new gold from the earth. The miners built contraptions called long toms that were between 8 and 15 feet long. With a steady stream of water channeled into them, the long toms would sift dirt much more efficiently, but for many this still yielded little or no gold. 